Hey YouTube, it's GV Loan Guy. It is March 19th a.m. on the West Coast here, and I was just uh, just this video by T Bar 1984. I really like his videos. He explains a lot of stuff. He's talking about this moon over Hawaii, the big uh, what the reasons are that everybody's getting all crazy about it. But anyway, he makes reference at the end to one of these. Uh, guys that puts out an interesting blog page so I decided to take a look at it and I thought I would uh, share with you some of the interesting things so this blog page is uh, put out by this guy right here and as you can see you know he doesn't look like he's a big guy out of NASA that's part of a plot to give us bad information it looks like he might be a reputable reputable guy amateur astronomer working out of South Australia Adelaide South Australia anyway so I was reading through his blog page the current one and he makes reference to Nibiru and 2012 and the you know the focus of numerous fears of astronomical catastrophe and one of the fears centers around the mythical planet Nibiru Supposedly either a super Jupiter or brown dwarf, Nibiru is allegedly in the inner solar system, somewhere between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars, heading for a close encounter with the Earth. The latest alarm comes from Terrell Croft, who lots of you know as Terrell 03, who claims that in March 22nd this year, there will be a magnitude 9 earthquake affecting the Pacific Rim. That's up here. Somewhere along here Pacific Rim All right I'm right here We're right on it so of course I pay attention anytime the subject comes up and I'm putting this up to have both sides of the argument presented because as you know I have a video on the prediction made by Curtis uh, that uh, March 23rd there will be a 9.0 or greater so between Terrell and a handful of others we'll see uh, how these predictions come out but I thought I would post up the information here that presents the opposite side of the story which is the belief that there's no uh, rhyme or reason to this 188 day stuff so let me just go on here this will be due to a combination of the alignment of the earth sun moon and constellation Leo and an alleged heavy mass object his version of Nibiru all right, so there's a lot of stuff uh, going on right around that date, i got to admit. The basic idea is that every 188 days, roughly coinciding with the equinoxes, the lineup with Leo produces strong Earth's magnitude 7 or greater. The March equinoxes produce the strongest earthquakes because they also line up with the heavy mass object. On his page, he talks about winding back 188 days, from the March 2011 Fukushima earthquake and there's the September 10 uh, 2010 Christchurch earthquake then wind back another 188 days and there is the February 2010 earthquake spooky although this is less impressive when you realize there were seven magnitude 7 or greater earthquakes between March 2011 and September 2010 and 13 magnitude 7 or greater earthquakes between September 2010 and February 2010 on average there are 15 magnitude 7 or greater earthquakes a year so six months after any earthquake you would expect to see another one there is nothing special about the equinox months as well as the actual dates of the earthquake can be up to two weeks away from the equinox. Not very convincing. Okay, well, that doesn't concern me because as I have pointed out, there's a window. I, I don't, I think that's perfectly acceptable. Somewhere in February, March, early April, late February, all of March, early April seems to be the time frames and six months on the opposite side. So anyway, let me go on. Okay, you say, sure, there's a lot of magnitude seven plus earthquakes. But maybe the magnitude 7 plus earthquakes are more 
common every 188 days. Well, so he did some charts and stuff here, which is pretty impressive. Allegedly, this is the area that we should have been looking for some sort of pattern, and it's missing. Not there. So, I've looked at this a couple of ways. In my original discussion of Menser Omer Bossage idea, I did a four-year analysis of earthquake frequency. Remember that four-year analysis is the standard way to pick up cyclic events out of noisy data. If earthquakes are more common every 188 days, we should see a peak every 188 days. In fact, there is no peak. Maybe it's only the magnitude 8 or greater earthquakes with the 376 day cycle that are more frequent. So I redid my four year analysis on the 36 years of magnitude 8 or greater earthquakes and the earthquake data can be downloaded here which I did click on by the way and br that brought me over here which I'm going to come back to. Again we see no peaks. The red arrows indicate the peaks where the peaks should be if they existed but we see nothing but noise. When I did this on 30 years of sunspot data, very noisy data set with only three peaks, four-year analysis clearly showed a peak of 10 years, not far from the long-term average of 11 years, which is the solar cycle. Bottom line, no 188-day or 376-day cycle as claimed by Terrell. So this guy's got impressive data here, and it looks pretty good. I'll put a link down below. You can check this. I thought it was pretty good information. Uh, there's a little bit more, and then I'm going to jump over to something that I noticed. Uh, he did mention something about the eight or greater. So I thought, you know what? The, here's the bottom line. We're talking about earthquakes that are, we're looking for, you know, this predicted earthquake coming up in a few days uh, of a 9.0. So if something like a 7.5 shows up, should we count that? I don't know, you know, I, I mean, sevens apparently are quite common. So I thought, well, let me look at what anything over 8.0. So I followed one of the links that he put on his deal here. And I went and typed in 170, uh, I'm sorry, 1970 to 2012. Anything magnitude 8 or greater. And I did that search, and here's the results. And this is what I thought was interesting. In the 70s, as you can see here, the information indicates that there are, in the decade, in the 10-year decade of the 70s, there were four earthquakes that are eight or above. Here they are. 75, May. 76, January. 77, April. 77, again, August. All right, so in this category, uh, of these four, I would say that two of them fall into the window that we're talking about. The, the uh, April 21st, which is kind of on the outer edge, but it's still there. And then the August 19th, right in the middle, smack dab, boom. But May and January, I don't know what to think of that. So, so far we're there. Four of them in the decade of the 70s recorded. Here's the decade of the 80s. Now there's five of them, which is interesting. In 1980, in July, that's outside the window that Terrell talks about. 1985, September 19th, that's right in there, boom. 1986, May, outside. Again in 86, October, that falls in the window. 89, May, outside. So we're going about every other one here so far, folks. That's five for the decade of the 80s. Now, the decade of the 90s. Interestingly, there are six 8.0 magnitude earthquakes or greater. So here we go, 94 June, that's outside the window. 94 October, right there, right inside the window. 95 July, outside the window. 95 again, uh, October 9th, right in the middle, 96, February, 98, March, both October, February, and March. So now there's three, four out of six that fall inside the window. 
that Terrell's talking about. Let's look at the decade of the, uh, I don't know what you call it. Now all of a sudden we've jumped from four per decade to five per decade in the 80s, six per decade in the 90s. Now we've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 8.0 magnitude earthquakes or greater in the decade of the aughts, of the 2000, in the 19, we would call it the 1900s, so this is in the 2000s, in that decade, 13 of them. So let's look at where they fall. Here's November, that's just right on the outside edge of the window. June, outside the window. September 25th, right, boom, right there in 2003. 04, December, outside the window. Another one, 04, a 9.1, look at that, outside the window. 05, March, right in the middle. 06, May, 06 again, November, so August, September, October, so November's outside. 07, January, outside the window. 07, April 1st, that's right smack dab in the middle. 07 August 15th, right smack dab in the middle. 07 September, right smack dab in the middle. And in 09 September, right smack in the middle. All right, so, so there's a trend here. As we get in the latter part of the decade, these, the frequency of things falling inside that window of August, September, October, or February, March, April, seems to be getting a little bit bigger. But that's, you know, that's just, you can always look at things how you want. So here we are in the beginning now of the next decade, and we're into 2010. We had one in February 27th, right in the middle of the window that Tarot talks about. 2011, March 11th, boom, right in the middle. So what you can see here is that starting right here in April 1st of 07, from that point on, Every single earthquake that's been 8.0 or greater has fallen within the window of either February, March, and April, where we're right smack dab in the middle of today, or on the other side, August, September, October. So, I don't know. I'm just saying. I just want to present all the information that you guys decide for yourselves. Alrighty, you take care.